it's live. I think. And then I think on your Google Plus page or your YouTube account, we'll just remember that video and then see it. Okay, so I can just minimize this probably? Yeah, yeah. Then you can go away and go away. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't want to wait too long. Let's go ahead and just start this guy here, even though we've got a small class. Um, hi, I'm Dennis Wu, and um, this class is uh, Rails Learning Stoppers. And this is the first time that I'm teaching. Um, uh, Brad and I decided to sort of pitch in with, with, with Gabe here to uh, give back a little bit and uh, um, um, uh, you know share a little knowledge, uh, the little knowledge that we might have about uh, Rails. And uh, for me in particular, it helps uh, in uh, my own learning of, um, of programming and the platform and all that other sort of and, and and everything else related to it. So, whoops, are we getting the? No, if anyone goes on the Google Hangout. Oh yeah, be sure to mute if you're on the on the if you get on the hangout. Okay. Um, so uh, we had a little pre-class uh, chatter, so we know a, a number of people here are uh, have already done some programming and have messed around with Rails, but maybe you've messed around in a different environment. There are a couple of other guys who didn't speak. Uh, uh, you're huh? Muhammad. Okay, yeah, and uh, uh, your experience, I mean... Okay, so maybe it's learning in particular, you know, yeah. how how Rails or how Sinatra works might be of interest to you. Hi, come on and join in if you're here for the class, which is a small class today, but <laughs> if you want to go ahead and just sit, uh, we're fine, or... Um, and in the back there. Uh, my name is Elton. Yeah. Uh, I was here last year, last week. Oh, yeah. Cool. So uh, I have very little programming uh, knowledge, none, but I've been trying to just take online courses. Cool. For the last uh, couple of months. Excellent. Excellent. Just here to learn you are my audience. <laughs> <laughs> you're the guy I'm thinking of when I was creating this presentation, so you're, you're, you're in luck here. Uh, and we did it. We met a couple I of guys here. I've yeah. I've been messing around with, like, whatever job and Meteor. C sharp, but I find my home in Ruby as a rebel. Ruby is like perfect. <laughs> I found my home in that. And Meteor JS is like seems to be something that. I'm doing yeah, like, no, there's a lot of cool stuff that's going on. Ruby yeah. on Rails, something I can get and actually understand without freaking out. Okay, good. You'll be able to help out some people that are freaking out because I'm, this is kind of pitched towards if you're freaking out a little bit. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm Greg. Uh, I guess you're saying like who you are, what your level is. Yeah, just yeah, just a little bit about yeah. yourself since we I mean, have small countries. I can learn a bunch of things and like then I doesn't quite go far enough where I don't get like real world experience in it. Uh, okay. And then you, know, you don't go so far where you just like learn it in a in class or you know, in something. Job right, getting some focus on, on whatever the project happens to be. Okay, well, um, we'll see what we can do in terms of, you know, uh, uh, sort of scooping scooping up there. And we, we met, uh, uh, but why don't you reintroduce yourself? Uh, I've, I've been a Linux system for years, and more recently DevOps. Uh, I do a lot of uh, Ruby and Chef. Um, I've been working for Cognitive Ruby for a while back, and uh, they were Ruby shop, and I started doing a lot more into it. Excellent. And Brad? I mean, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Brad. I, uh, I teach with Dennis. I taught my first class last week. I've been using Rails on a daily basis for a couple of years. Uh, Still on the background in programming. It's really the only the stack that I know. Uh, I can do some stuff in JavaScript. I uh, really like Rails. And um, have, a, have a couple of projects in the user for work now. OK, cool. So we're all spoken for here. So um, so I created a little presentation today. Whoops, that should not be jumping quite up to there. That is your view. That's our ending view. Uh, if you guys want to follow along with the presentation, you can go to this view, dwoo, dwoo, 
Uh, whoops. Rails blockers. Let's see if I can get that in, enlarged there somehow. Let's go and do one note here so you can see the URL here. So type this in because one of the things that I discovered is that I can actually synchronize the presentation as we're going along here. So you, if you can't see this, you'll be able to see your own screen. OK. OK, so I'll work off of my own Prezo here, or, and you can watch here. OK, so um, titled the presentation. Whoops, keep checking back to that. Title of the presentation, uh, Rails Learning Stoppers. If Rails is uh, supposed to be easy to learn, why am I having such difficulty? So a number of people, um, uh, here, let me tell you about me, first of all. That's me if you need to stalk me at all. And I like making things dynamic. That's all I'm going <laughs> to sort of say about uh, me and my, uh, my history here. I've, been work I've worked, uh, uh, like Brad said, we worked together. I've worked with a, a number of startups, uh, exited uh, uh, one um, uh, uh, started out doing tech primarily in PHP at my, MySQL, the whole LAMP stack way back in .com 1. Uh, got away from it as our businesses were getting um, uh, more mature and a little bit more successful. And then uh, 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 um, uh, you know, so I've got into more uh, management and, and particularly agile management and, and so forth for teams. Started getting away from the tech. And then just recently got back into the technology again, which I'm finding is just at a fascinating state right now. Um, so you, I don't know too much about, but I'm making some assumptions, and it's and I can see it's sort of, see it's sort of scattered. You were either totally new to programming, or new to Ruby on Rails. Maybe you've done some programming before. Uh, maybe you've done some online, or have done at least one tutorial. Um, and maybe you're somewhat confused. Uh, or maybe not, in, the, 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 in, in which case you can uh, speak up and help everybody along here, get a little dialogue going here, okay? So um, to help with what we're going to go through today, I've actually identified a couple of, uh, a few of my heroes. So uh, one of them is uh, Cersei Lannister from Game of Thrones, okay? Uh, another is Spock from the original Star Trek, not the new, not the new Star Trek, but original Star Trek, my preference. And, and Skrillex, okay? So these three, <laughs> these three guys will be coming in to, to, to help us out with uh, 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 some of the examples today, okay? But that sort of tells you a little bit about how, um, how I like to roll here, okay? Okay, so, you know, there's a lot of talk about, and actually I, 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 this presentation in some sense is my own personal reaction to, uh, to uh, having had a sort of bumpy ramp up with Ruby on Rails, a personal ramp up, ramp up with Ruby on Rails. Um, uh, you know, we, we tend to think that it's, it's easy. It's got a cute name, so we tend to believe that maybe it's an easy language or an easy framework in order to learn. Um, there's a big promise of snap together pieces so that you can just put things together very quickly. That, that is true to, to some extent, assuming that you can sort of get it uh, going and get it all together. But I found the experience a little bit like this other place that uh, also prompts to snap together pieces, IKEA. You know, it's, they, they, they promise it to be very easy, but actually, it, it, in some sense, the directions can be a little bit uh, obscure and, and confusing, you know, from time to time, okay? Um, and I think there's sort of a public mythology of, uh, of Rails is easy to learn. So if you'll take this clip, for example, from uh, uh, HBO's Silicon Valley, which I'll try to play as loud as possible here. Kidney function liver function, testosterone. I don't know how you did it, but you have essentially aged 40 years in the last seven weeks. Wow, but really? We had a meth addict in here this morning who was biologically younger than you are, and he's 58. My space guy. So what is going on? Uh, this is cloud service configuration. I've been stuck on it for over a week. Wow. I'm a good programmer. I mean, it's the only thing I am good at. I mean, last year I threw a frisbee at my tooth. Well, that's more of a dental issue. Yep. Okay, I, uh, the, the point is, I learned Ruby on Rails over a weekend when I was 17. I should be able to learn cloud. I have to. May I give you my professional opinion as your doctor? You should have taken that $10 million from Gavin Belson, okay? But regrets will kill you, so try not to dwell on it. I tried to tell you. 
Okay, so anyway, you know, you're, if you're 17, you can learn Ruby on Rails in a weekend. Well, maybe, maybe not, right? Uh, I was reading a book uh, uh, recently. Actually, I was reading the Kindle version of this. I'm just using the book for illustrations. Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore it takes place in San Francisco. It's actually written by a guy who used to work at Twitter. And there was this quote in it. They, the Ruby actually figures pretty prominently inside of the in, in this work of fiction. Come, come on in uh, if you're uh, here for Ruby. Ruby, yeah, Ruby learning here. We're just getting getting kicked the uh, start is here. No problem. Uh, yeah, just uh, we're presenting here. Or I'm a Ruby you're newbie. Yeah, you're Ruby newbie. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. What's your name? Garrett. Garrett. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Garrett. Good, good to meet you, I'm Dennis, and you're in the class. Yeah. Hi. Thanks for giving this class. Oh, thanks. thanks for, thanks for accommodating me being late. Oh, okay, no problem. <laughs> okay. Um, so anyway, uh, the, the 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 Ruby as advertised is uh, I won't uh, you know I'll, I'll quickly read this code. This is where I think Ruby shines. Imagine that you're cooking, but instead of following the step by uh, the recipe step by step and hoping for the best, you can actually take ingredients in and out of the pot whenever you want. It's no longer just a linear process in success or, uh, mostly for me, uh, frustrating failure, uh, it's play, which is from this book, which I as mentioned is a, <laughs> is a bit of a work of fiction. Uh, it, it's true, actually, if you, can, if you can sort of ramp up, you know, and, 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 and get hooked into, into, into uh, Ruby and into Rails, uh, it, can, it can run very fast, but uh, uh, like I said, uh, 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 pointing to my own frustration and to the frustration that I've seen from a number of other people, uh, it also can be very uh, confounding, especially if you came from other uh, frameworks. Uh, but uh, we're going to go a little bit, at least a little bit, towards demystifying a little bit. Uh, now, so to me, I, I believe that that Rails actually is, in fact, somewhat big. If you're um, following along in the present with the presentation as I am here, uh, that that, that uh, I posted earlier, and you click on this link, you'll see this. Th this actually appeared on. Um, on uh, the um, which group was it? It was on a Reddit group for Rails uh, just recently, and this is a mind map of Ruby competencies. And you can, if you just pick out any one of these things and start breaking it out, you can sort of see it's like you know each one of these sections, which is a part of Rails, goes fairly deep. And to get good at any one of these things. Um, the, you know, even your IDE, if you're using it, you know, in, in a very good sort of way, can take you like, you know, a, a fair amount of time. I, I mean, by a fair amount of time, maybe a day or two, something like this. But there's enough spokes on here to take up a, a you know, a, a fair amount of your time in order to get really good at it. I mean, you got your, you know, you've got a bunch of command line stuff to deal with. You've got your whole web stack. You've got, you know, deployment issues. I mean, all of this tends to be covered in. Um, uh, 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 many online uh, resources, and uh, you know, my opinion is that it, it is taking on. It, it is assuming that you've you're, you're approaching Rails from uh, uh, the point of view of somebody who probably already knows another framework, maybe already know Java or maybe you know the Lamp stack like I did. Uh, uh, but even coming f uh, uh, from the it, uh, approaching Rails from the standpoint of an experienced developer, I did find a few things about it confounding. So I'm, I'm just sort of sharing that with you. So it is big and powerful, and, and when you start firing up Rails, I mean, sometimes it just feels like, you know, the, the big creature from, the big, the big machines, the Jaegers from, from Pacific Rim is just like you fire up Rails new app, you run bundle install, these are standard commands that you run whenever you start up Rails, and like all these files get created, databases get created, um, uh, you know, it's a lot of noise basically, and, and, and to me, um, it's, it was a bit difficult to fathom, so I'm assuming that, that for some people it might be difficult to fathom as well. Okay, so you know now in, in saying so, we we could say it's big, but we really shouldn't let big scare us. If you if you look at, for example, uh, as we see in some of the examples here, uh, um, things that we consider to be entertainment, like Game of Thrones, and you click on those relationship charts. You know, watching a TV show like Game of Thrones can get as complicated as learning all of Rails. But the same way that you under start learning about any one particular uh, universe, you don't take it in all at once. I mean, after all, when you're watching Game of Thrones, it comes at you over the course of like, uh, so far it's been three, now it's getting to be four seasons now or something like that. It can take a little while to learn. But 
you can sort of think about it in a comparable sense to the emotional and uh, uh, time investment that you're going to make into getting any large world that you're going to jump into. So uh, that is something actually I was totally unprepared for when I was looking at Rails because there was so much of this promise of you were able to learn it within a weekend or so. Uh, to me, uh, there's a matter of learning it and learning enough to be able to do something fairly simple in it and to be able to get it running and then there's actually learning it well enough so that you can actually be productive in a work environment or pair programming or doing something very expressive in it aside from the tutorials that you're learning. Okay, and that's, the, I'm trying to, the, you know, that's what some of this presentation is geared for is to, is that I think a lot of the presos uh, uh, skip a lot of the things that um, end up be, uh, eventually becoming blockers to uh, the person maybe a month into learning Rails or so. Um, okay, so let's, let's pare down this learning tree a little bit in order to uh, focus on what we're going to focus on today, at least. So, um, uh, 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 oh, I'm sorry, this is a, l a little bit of a rehash slide, but uh, uh, I wanted to actually have a little sort of focus in detail in terms of what does get focused on, by, t in particular, by two of the more popular um, uh, uh, online resources. Uh, a lot of people have gone through, and I, I went through it as well, the Michael Hartle uh, Ruby on Rails tutorial. Are, are any of you guys familiar with this, the Hartle Ruby on Rails tutorial? Brad, I, I know Brad went through it. And Brad, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a Twitter client. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is extreme. Yeah, there's no question about it. It is really good. It shows you, it is like a black belt taking out 20 guys. You know, it's like it really shows you every freaking thing that you should be doing, not just in, in, in Rails, but in Agile web development as well, okay? But, you know, this is some of the list of things that it covers, which includes, I'll just read Can off some. Um, here, I'm going to try. Oh. Please. Or, uh, well, actually, you can follow along by going to this um, URL. Um, do that. And you should be able to. Uh, uh, I've got it keyed up so that it it uh, it uh, 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 the slides that I'm turning actually follow along. Are you able to get into that? Um, I'm trying to. Uh, let's see. Okay. All right, type in that URL. In. Mm -hmm. Slash rail blockers, and you can forget about the hash at the end, or put it in. It doesn't matter. Yeah, that doesn't get sent to the server. The half doesn't get sent to the yeah. server. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So cool. You are caught up here. So radiant, radiant, some uh, CSS uh, shadow, text shadow. Okay. So now you're queued up. Can you see that? It's the same thing. Okay. So you've got, you've got Git and version control. You've got. Uh, TDD, which is own, its own set of disciplines that you could spend a week on, and then the way, the specific way that they co cover it is, is, it gets pretty deep, basically, because they're doing um, uh, a live optimized uh, 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 test-driven development environment. You're handling JavaScript, which is own, its own set, you can just be a JavaScript programmer, you know? That's uh, what I am. Uh, J there's jQuery. There's, a there's Ajax to cover. There's, then there's the optimized copy script that, that, that gets covered, okay? There's there then they usually they you know uh, both Hartle and Agile Web Development throw in Haml, which can be confusing if you're not uh, um, uh, because most people are more used to HTML, but but Haml gets thrown in there while you're trying to learn this entire environment. You've got your environment set up to to, to handle, that which is either RBM or RB uh, EMV. Any one of those, if you get stopped on, it can take you a day or, or take you out for a significant while. They they march you through Hartle marches you through some of the editor stuff. There's CSS, including some Bootstrap. There's SAS. There's I didn't even mention less JSON, YAML. I mean, there's all this stuff that you're covering. Okay. Um, to me, uh, it, it was in some sense what I wanted out of uh, such a tutorial uh, uh, because I felt that the web development uh, house that uh, I actually had some startup interest in was doing things wrong, and Hartle actually does point the way to doing things absolutely correct. So I feel Hartle ultimately does point to really good form. Yeah. What's the latest version of Michael Hartle? It, it's online, actually. It's it's it, Hartle updates his um, uh, tutorials all the time. So he he's re he's recent all the way up to 
whatever the most recent rate we're giving the rate we're is. Pardon me? Well, this is what I'm kind of arguing against, is that this is good format that you should learn it, but your reaction is kind of the way Spock is here, basically. It's just like, that. that that's kind of a lot, you know? And if you're trying to learn Rails, you know, uh, the, the, it, the, he's teaching you something good about web development, but, but it's actually bad for learning the essentials of, of Rails and the web stack. Okay, and that, that's why I'm making my presentation here today, to say, well, you know, do reread it later. Do reread it later. But I don't, I, I, my feeling is that going through Hartle actually could be just sort of an overview, and I don't want you to get derailed from learning Rails after going through, you know, it took me six weeks. Another friend of mine, I know it took two months going through, through Hartle, and, and it, it, it really wasn't quite catching. Now, you might be uh, uh, one of those individuals like Brad who was able to just sort of, get, you know, run right through it and then doesn't let it be a stopper. But I can tell you that it, 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 it was a stopper for me, and I tended to know better. Okay. So the approach that I'm recommending, actually, is uh, uh, a much more limited approach, which, it, which focuses really on the core, uh, one, you know, one, the core paradigms of Rails and almost any framework, you know, which is the, uh, a, a close look at the model of view controller paradigm. Okay. And that starts actually with something that that Hartle does give some service to, but but doesn't really emphasize enough, in my opinion, which is roots. And based on roots, how to get and post data from the web to your application. Okay, so that's getting data in and out of your basic application, manipulating data in your database uh, uh, from your app. Okay, so once you're able to get stuff from some view on, on your browser uh, and, and on your app, your app talks to the database. That's the standard way that model view controller works. And that, that these three items above form the basis of model view controller, which everybody talks about, not just in Rails, but in other frameworks like, uh, like uh, um, uh, Angular, uh, Backbone, uh, uh, you know, any, of, any modern... Uh, uh, JavaScript framework like the mean stack express uh, all that sort of stuff okay okay <laughs> um, I mean it makes sense that this makes sense those are just copying this because that's they understand the pattern and they copied it and they, what they've tried to do is create a general purpose solution to fit your problem which is really the opposite way that problem solving should be done I mean you should you should come with a solution based on the problem not come up with a solution to generally fit any problem to try to shoehorn that solution into the problem. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, that, that, and, and, uh, uh, you, might, you might be right about that. There are some people have complained about, you know, some the MVC that is going into uh, JavaScript, but uh, the, uh, part, the, you know, to give the guys, um, let's, let's uh, play devil's advocate then, right, uh, to give those guys a little bit of credit, uh, uh, the, the, those breakouts are actually making those frameworks a little bit uh, easier to learn if you know Rails, right? So if you knew Rails, yeah. then it becomes a little bit easier to actually learn yeah. Backbone or Ember because it actually looks similar. It's a copycat, but it does look similar. It's a golden okay. Okay. So, so for for me, and I'm trying to share this with you guys, uh, it it actually. Uh, it, it helped me a lot, actually, to turn to, and this was actually recommended to me earlier on, and that I just went through like a couple of Rails tutorials anyway, and 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 uh, was successful in getting uh, the the tutorial examples to work, but really didn't have come away with a really strong understanding as to how things were working. Okay, it, it, as it turns out, learning the Sinatra framework, which tends to not create this massive Rails app. Uh, at, right at the beginning with all of its multiple folders and all of its big harnesses and all that sort of stuff. Uh, uh, Sinatra actually takes an opposite approach where it starts out very small and you can actually uh, create a full MVC app in one page, okay, or maybe two pages. And so that's kind of what we're going to walk through a little bit, okay, or at least as much as we can in, in the time that we've got tonight. So for you guys who are not so, uh, who's kind of not, is there anybody who's willing to admit they're not sort of familiar with model view controller? Here, you guys have at least heard of it. Or, uh, yeah, okay, so uh, uh, so uh, again, my audience here. Okay, there's there um, the it, it used to be that when you would write a program, you know, there wasn't a lot of sort of strict order. There was no pattern to it 
as it were. Okay, so this word pattern comes up a lot. So an emergent, as people started uh, writing more and more code, patterns kind of started developing with respect to the way that code should be organized so that you have the best reusability and you have the best uh, breakout so that um, uh, there's uh, order when another, in particular, another programmer looks at uh, another programmer's code. If you're writing your own code and writing it as it were in a Galapagos, your own sort of world, you might have everything sort of figured out in some sort of a way, but it might be very unconventional. And so what Rails and many other frameworks try to do is they, they adopt the principle of, uh, of um, convention over configuration is, is what it's called. Okay, so instead of configuring your own uh, way of writing programs, you're actually d adopting a convention that everybody uh, uh, chooses in order to break out the code. And so one of the standard conventions that people have uh, uh, or patterns that people have is the uh, quite often named, uh, quite often mentioned model view controller. It's a little bit ironic because actually when you line them up, you, you sort of see model controller view. Okay, and then you've got a user who's interacting with this entire thing. But the, what, what these three bubbles correspond to are, uh, and I'll just sort of walk it through here, is uh, there's a model which generally has to do with database and storing information for a long term. Okay, there's the controller level, which is, sits in between. The controller is uh, all of the control mechanisms. It's usually the, lo the core logic of the program but that has less to do with either just pure storage of the data or presentation of the data. And then there's the view, which is what you see in your web browser and is primarily concerned with the presentation, but it might be uh, slightly more invisible things like invisible um, uh, signals that are sent to the web browser uh, 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 while the code is not updating. Those also count as, as, uh, as a view in some sort of way. And um, uh, the user, the person who's out there interacting with all this stuff generally interacts with the controller and the, view, and, and the view levels, not with the model level. So this gets mentioned a lot. MV, you'll hear this uh, uh, acronym a lot, MVC, and you'll hear that phrase model view controller a lot. And Rails follows this convention. Sinatra can be written to follow this convention. And a lot of the other frameworks that we were just mentioning also follow these conventions. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay, we'll step it up here now. So okay, so let's actually begin and start looking at some code. I hope it's getting dark enough now so that I can actually fire up the browser here and 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 show some of this stuff here. So um, I've got some raw code here. Uh, if you want to be able to follow along, just by clicking on that myapp.rb raw code. Uh, but uh, it might actually, if you can see this, um, uh, serve you well to just follow along as I'm typing some of this code in here, okay? So what I'm going to do is actually start up, uh, hang on, I'm going to go to my Rails uh, project directory here, um, and uh, I'm going to, uh, let's make it, I'm going to make a new directory, okay? A completely new directory called uh, Sinatra Rails School. Okay, Everybody's, is everybody following me there? I hope you guys uh, know a little bit of Unix, at least. Yes, no? Okay, so I'm just making a new directory there, and I'm, gonna, I'm going to change my directory into that. Oops, I've got another, direct, I've got another uh, uh, directory called uh, Sinatra. Um, so uh, to get this uh, directory ready in order to play with Sinatra, all I have to do is say gem install Sinatra, and you might want to try that as well. And this, of course, is assuming that you've got some Rails installed because there's, you know, gem, the gem command is based on Rails, gem, Rails gems, and there's a whole bunch of stuff. But it sounds like most of you guys have have, uh, have toyed with Rails uh, a little bit. But I've got this gem installed at this point. Okay, so um, uh, uh, if I make a direct, if I make a um, file uh, uh, here, I'm going to do it in VI, okay, and call it my app RB. Okay, and I'm going to do something very simple here, which is just to say uh, puts uh, hello world. Okay. 
and I'm going to type in Ruby myapp.rb. And you can see that I'm just putting a hello world on the screen, right? Nobody's got a problem with that, right? Okay. So um, I'm going to go back to that app, and I'm going to uh, require um, Sinatra. I hope that's right. Hang on. Let me see if my app is correct here. Yes. Um, if I run the app, it will still produce, it will uh, all of a sudden actually fire up a, a, um, a web session. So this is very much like if you were firing up Rails, but just the simple addition of require Sinatra there actually fires up a web server, basically. So um, let me do that same hello world then, but I'm going to put stuff to the web. So the way that Sinatra does this is uh, like this. Do um, hello world and OK. So you can see I still have this puts here, um, but uh, it's that's just going to put stuff to uh, my council. If I uh, uh, if I uh, type in, if you, you can see where it says get here, get is referring to the root directory of whatever web server I'm running, and it will print out uh, hello world. So I'm going to quit out of that, uh, quit out of my VI here. I'm going to fire up Ruby uh, uh, myapp.rb again, and now locally. I'm going to go to the Sinatra server, which is located at this weird URL, localhost 4567. Okay, because it's Sinatra, so I think they took, you know, 4567, it's like a B event. If I click on that, it produces Hello World. So now all of a sudden I've got a web server running, and it's actually able to get Hello World. Okay. Um, yeah, questions? I, I, I lost you since you created the, the, the folder Sinatra inside Sinatra. Okay. Do you want me to go back here for a second? No, you can just tell me what, what you did. I, I know you created a file and you, you, you put some code in it, but where did you put that file? Oh, where did I put this? Uh, where did I put that file? Okay, here. Let me show you. Okay, remember that directory I created, Sinatra Rail School? Yes. And, this, uh, and then I just put it right out. I just put it. I created this file myapp.rb uh, okay. and it's just sitting right it's sitting right out in that directory so the only thing that this R, myapp.rb file contains right now are those few lines put hello and then get the route get this route and then when i when i say get you, i can go to hello world okay here now i'm going to demonstrate to you that it's actually a functional web server. I'm going to go to, I'm going to create an, a different route called foo, and then and I'm going to say here, I am at foo, okay? And then type in end, okay? So I'm going to save that, Rest, restart that Ruby app, that web server is running again. Now, remember we still have that slash there? So it still says hello world, but if I type in slash foo, I'm at foo. Okay. So it's in the same file. It, yeah, that's the same, still the same file, but now it's acting like a, it's kind of acting like a web server. You know, the same way that you go to the web, and you would go slash whatever, you know, some <laughs> URL, right? All of a sudden, you're getting now you've got data that's going back and forth, right? So I can create as many of those as I want to, right? I can create another. I can, I can, um, do yet. Let's do yet another one, okay? Not to belabor the point. Don't worry. It'll start to get interesting soon. Let's call it do. And here is do. And so again, all three of these things are running, okay? Ruby, my app, again, it's running again, so my web service running. I have a new URL, do. Here's do. Okay, so if you just wanted to serve up a bunch of static pages, this would be a very easy way to be able to do it. You'd just be able to have to deploy it. But I'm hoping to show you, first of all, that 
this, this environment is much, much easier than Rails to understand, first of all, because Rails fires up so much stuff. And a lot of what I'm doing here right now is fair, should be fairly easy to be able to follow. You can see I just have three possible routes right now, right? And what I'm doing is kind of interacting with the view and a very simple controller. Okay? So let's continue a little bit. So these examples will start to get a little bit more complicated now. Okay? How do I put an apostrophe in the string? Um, we could do that, but I'm, uh, th it's a little bit of an exceptional case because I have to put additional quotes and so forth. Let me continue, and then we'll, we'll, we'll okay. work through a few exceptions uh, uh, shortly. Okay? Is everybody sort of following so far? Okay, good. Okay. So, um, and I'm hoping that this is already sort of becoming a little bit interesting to you Rails learners out there because this, when I saw this, this immediately started to clarify routes for me. Okay. Okay. So, a lot of the times in Rails or in many applications, you have something that looks like this. Whoops, hang on. Uh, let's call it something else, like whoop, that's my last name. And then you have like a, uh, like a one after it, right? Or some other number after it, okay? Now this is just gonna break right now, there's nothing there, okay? And I'm also not running the app, but, but you know, the, you know th that one could change to maybe two, it could be three, it could be um, Spock, it could be anything basically. And, and, and oftentimes you wanna be able to get a variable into your application, okay? So how do you do that? So th this this you know presents uh, 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 a topic of interest to us. So one way you see this commonly done, and I'm just going to call something like Lou here, uh, get Lou, and then I'm going to throw something uh, which is a Ruby symbol out here, and I'm going to I'm going to say um, uh, the Lou uh, or the the variable is. Um, ID, okay, and see what happens, okay. So once again, I'm running my Ruby app, and I've got a new path, which is Lou, okay, and now I'm going to throw a number at it. It doesn't matter what number, and the number I get back does not appear on the screen, okay, but you can see that there's something that's called ID there, okay. So, um, the, the what, if we wanted to show, you know, the, the expected result or the result that we're going for is to have this, it, say the variable is 321443 at this point, okay? So another guess that we might take as to what we might want to write if we were to try to get that variable out would be to use the, here I need an, like X, O, O, uh, to be able to get that variable out would be to use the um, the uh, Ruby's way of being able to write strings, which looks like this. End. Okay. So you've seen in other you can see uh, you'll see in other Ruby apps that when you're trying to embed something, um, you'll put the hash mark and the parentheses around a variable, and then it will say I'm not going to print out like colon ID. I'm going to print out what's inside of colon ID. Let's run that and see what happens. Okay, so I it's that same number and it's with it's X O O at this point. Okay, well no, it didn't print that out either. Okay, that's still uh, um, a weird variable at this point. So um, as it turns out the way that it should be done is using this weird thing, which if you have some familiarity with uh, Rails, I'm just going to copy and paste this up. So go a little faster here. So I have to get rid of this stuff. It's called this something completely different, like uh, zoo. Whoops. Sorry, having the eye fingers here. So the variable is oh, 
params ID. Okay, so let's run that and see what happens. I'm here. <laughs> what did I just call it? Zoo. Thanks. Oops. That didn't work. Where did I, what did I type in correctly? The variable is right here. I'm going to take this exactly. Okay, that's why I have it written beforehand. So in case I'm going to do screw ups while I'm live programming here. What did I do differently? It might be the single codes actually. Actually, it'll be interesting for me if it is the single codes. Because okay. I wasn't sure that. Oh, yeah, yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Um, uh, no, don't use single. <laughs> don't use single quotes. Use double quotes if you need to, for the, for the, for this to happen. Okay. So so now this gives us a somewhat interesting result, basically, in terms of getting stuff in and out here, basically, because you can see now if I uh, type in not just I typed in three two one four three before, right? But I can put anything in here at this point. I can put in Spock, for example, and it'll type Spock variable as Spock, right? I can put in, um, you know, uh, my credit card number, right? And it will come out, basically, okay? So this tells us a fairly important thing right now, which, uh, you know, I wish actually there would have been some prepondering about this, you know, in, in sort of in, 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 in real learning, but, you know, that little parameter params, basically, you know, is able to get, uh, you know, a variable specified in this sort of way in order to be able to, uh, and, and uh, allows you to be able to manipulate it inside of your program. Okay. Now, let's actually explore this a little bit because this is also something that is not uh, handled in other tutorials, and I'm just going to cut and paste a few of these things here. Um, the um, uh, uh, one thing is that it doesn't matter what the variable is named here. I'm actually going to I'm going to cut and paste uh, these two examples here. Okay. Going to the end here. Oops. Um, And that should run here. So you can see I've got another, um, unfortunately I've named it, I've already got a loo that's above there there. So here I'm going to start cutting, I'm just going to start getting rid of some of these things here to just focus on what we're working on here. And I'm even going to get rid of that. Okay. Okay, so I've got something called house, and you can see that, you know, as expected, it's it doesn't matter what you call it. You know, there's something nothing magic about the very the symbol ID, okay, except that it is actually used in uh, specifically in models in order to be able to get specific records. So uh, put that in the back of your mind. Do not, but uh, uh, you know, there actually is nothing particular about what the the symbols are named. But if you name some symbol like Starship, for example, and then you pull up variable house. It's it's not going to come up, okay. So uh, here, let's do a few more here. Okay. Do this here. Okay, so now this actually is a really interesting example uh, uh, where it says woo and then ID. So again, I, I've still got that same form where I'm just saying that where I've got some basic root woo and then I've got an ID and then I'm going to pull out params ID, but I'm going to call a bunch of different things basically to show what's going on here. So let's do this. Run, run the Ruby app. The web server is running. So if I typed in uh, woo credit card, it shows credit card. And you can see that there are a few other variables that I've sort of tried to pull out here, like house and starship. 
and then there's uh, something which actually starts displaying like, like all of the things that are inside of your parameters. If if I wanted to populate the variable house, the, you'll you'll often see this in URLs. I don't know if you guys are observant about this. You'll see like this little question mark, and then if you type in this key and then this value, let's name a house like Lannister, like in the Game of Thrones, you'll see that the variable house is populated, or the very actually params house is populated with Lannister. If I wanted to add additional variables that I wanted to pass through, and if I add it, uh, I could do this by adding an ampersand, naming the other variable, in this case starship, and then make it equal to enterprise, let's say. And then all of a sudden, I'm able to actually populate additional variables. It doesn't matter what order these guys are in. If I took House Lannister out here and then threw it with an ampersand out to the end here, it will still populate the same way. So this is not often talked about. It's called the name. It's called name value pairs. I actually did a, a search inside of Hartle and also the um, Agile Web Development to see if that, that if if that phrase is named because uh, way back in old web they used to talk about it a lot. Name value pair. It's referred to as key value pair in Hartle, but but the 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 way that it relates to URLs is actually not very well spoken about. Um, if I add an additional Variable. Let's name additional variable like uh, computer equals foo. You can see I've got nothing that dumps out uh, um, uh, uh, computer foo. But if I if I look in the complete params inspector, it, it, it's part of the the hash that's it's part of the variables that are returned when you when you get this. So you'll want to look at this code carefully. Basically, I mean, uh, uh, you know, I'm calling on those two variables where I'm, I'm passing in the additional uh, key and value pairs, I'm not calling just house or starship, I'm calling params, and then with this uh, colon, there's something in Ruby called symbols. I'm, I'm actually calling house and, uh, I, I'm actually calling params symbol house, or params symbol starship. And then to get the dump of everything, I'm actually getting params.inspect. Okay, and that's basically how name value pairs work on the on the web, not just in this framework, but in any um, in any uh, 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 framework that you can imagine on the web. It's how HTTP works. Yes. So the dot inspect will then always be the same garbage for getting everything out. Yes. Yeah. It will dump. It will dump everything out. I believe it is the same in. I haven't checked this in in Rails. Um, it is. Uh, you can actually run inspect on almost any on it's it, as a general method on almost any hash actually or any object. Excuse me. Uh, without a question mark, because if you made it a question mark, it would be a yes or it would return a a, a, a boolean. That's right. Um, but. Um, uh, oh, let me ask something. Yeah. What's the difference between the question mark and the ampersand then? Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, let's pause here for a few seconds here. Yeah, 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 exactly. No, 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 no. It's a very good question, actually. Okay. So this particular uh, uh, URL, as I've constructed it, or, or excuse me, route that I've constructed here, um, expects that there's going to be something after the slash, right? The, the, but the only thing that's returned after that slash is everything up until the first question mark. The first question mark is always sort of like the, the, the reserved boundary between anything else in the URL and the, and the name value pairs or key value pairs that you're going to start passing back. Okay, so I mean, let me see if I can uh, make this a little bit more clear. If I got rid of that, for example, oops. Then it doesn't understand anything because there's nothing actually that there's nothing that 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 uh, uh, goes into ID and so the IT the, the value of symbol ID is is nil and so it Sinatra has an error or any app is going to have an error. If I type in anything else here though, it, it is able to populate that portion, but but everything else is dependent on having this uh, question mark uh, uh, and then you start your key value pair set. Okay. 
Uh, I'm trying to think of like maybe I should have checked. I, I should have looked at it beforehand. But uh, let's just go to any almost any URL. It's like it's so prevalent that if you were to just observe this on, um, uh, let's see, what's what's some place that's going like Amazon or something like that? YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. That's good. So is this essentially the URI and then value? Yeah, that's correct. Yes, that's correct. Uh, people always put in the bottom. Like, Watch. Yeah, so here, okay, so you can see with YouTube, there's watch, and who knows what they're doing with this watch, but you see that question mark there, right? So YouTube is getting back variables that look like V equals this ID. That ID refers to this specific video. V is like video. <laughs> yeah, they pass it around back and forth so much, they, they just want to have a single, you know, indicator for this thing. But you could actually add in a whole bunch of other, like, you know, config crap basically that's gonna, that, that, and actually if you look at things like, um, um, let's see. Um, oh, and watches the route essentially. Yeah, watches the route that it's going down. So that's like call this function and then pass it. That's correct, yes, yeah, that's correct. It's passed, that's a good way of explaining it, actually. It's like do this function or go to this URL because it's, that, it's got, it's, or go to this function. Yeah. That I've got defined, and right, processing. and then start processing it with these additional variables. And these additional variables start with what question mark, blah blah blah, whatever they happen to be. Okay. Any other questions on this? It's a fairly important point. I mean, this is basically how the whole freaking web operates. This is this is the GET protocol for, uh, for what they call the GET protocol for HTTP is yeah. a URL requested variable stream. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, for REST, it's useful. It's needed for RESTful API. So this is really core understanding, basically, yeah. in terms of how this stuff and works. A spec for it is RFC three. Oh, and you know, okay, yeah. So if you need to get this, the exact spec part, be sure to ask him after class, RFC3. okay? But I want you guys to understand exactly what, how this is called within uh, either Sinatra or, as we're going to find out, this is kind of the way it gets called in Rails as well. Okay, and to me, it was a big mystery. It's like, what the heck is actually going on with params, right? It's like, it's really just getting those those URLs, okay? Um, it's sort of interesting also that you get some adjustments also where it's like if I called this URL um, on that same app, oops, not poo, because I renamed it something else now. I have, uh, oh yeah, I should change my example here. House equals whatever, and uh, Starship equals whatever, more sweet nothings or something like that. You see, you see how more sweet nothings has in the URL that you get like autom automatic conversion to like the percent 20 over here, right? So you can't just type in a URL with spaces. In fact, Chrome, I think that's actually being adjusted at Chrome, where um, if you try to type in some spaces, it will just assume, well, you really didn't mean that. You meant something that, that translates to, like, percent 20 on something, so it will automatically convert that stuff. Okay. Is everybody okay with this so far? Because I'm going to move on to the next example. Yeah? All right. And I hope that this is uh, helping out a little bit here. Okay, actually, so that's actually my primary... Um, that's my primary example using what, what's called a, 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 a so-called get method, okay? And you can sort of see get that's being, uh, 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 get is actually the command that's used within Sinatra in order to be able to get information in this type of way. Now, um, uh, it's, it's often the case that you want to interact with your web not just through uh, the URL, obviously, but through a form of some sort. In, in fact, forms or variations on forms are the primary way by which uh, information is kind of uh, in, 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 a, in a very meaningful way going back and forth uh, on the web if you have any sort of user interaction. So I happen to have a form available here in myform.html. And I'm not even, I, this is sort of interesting because I'm not even running this form inside of Sinatra. I'm just, if this were sitting out just plain and out on the web, um, this, th this example will still work. So let's investigate what's going on here. And you can sort of see from this form and from the form URL that it, it's, it's very simple. I've got something uh, which will take a name, and uh, I'm going to hit, and I'll be able to fill that out, and I'll be able to hit submit. 
So let's look to see how that actually looks on um, uh, in, in the page here. Excuse me, uh, let's look at the uh, HTML for this. Should we be doing that, that making that form too? Uh, you, you can make the form, yeah. Uh, the, uh, 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 or you can yeah, cut and paste it or just sort of follow along here. So, Should we save it in the same directory then? Uh, and it can be saved in the same directory, yeah. Okay. So here, let me, let's, let's break it apart here. So here's a form. The form here, let's ignore this portion right now. I'm going to put this aside actually so that it's, it's not, we're just looking at the form tags. Very simple, okay. So the form probably at minimum has these, um, these uh, components to it. So I hope you guys know at least a little bit of HTML, okay. Um, form open and form close. You have a method which can be get, actually, or post. I'm going to show you the post method here, okay, because this is the most common method that's used in order to be able to put a form on the web or, and pass data back and forth. And then you have something called uh, action, which is where the form will go after you hit the submit button. Okay, this is not where the form itself is. It's, the fo it's where you're going to take the data and put it once you've hit the submit button. Okay, so the place I'm sending it to is I'm running Sinatra, so I've got that weird funky URL, localhost 4567, and then I've constructed a URL called form test. Okay, now that corresponds in my app to do, 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 do. to get, except I'm using post. It, you, you also have that same form test, okay? That co totally corresponds to this, this form test right there. And all it's going to return is that same parameter inspection, so we can see all the variables that get, that get sent across, okay? So let's reconstruct our form here. So inside of the form, you can't just send a form plain. You need to actually have some fields in it, sending a very, very rudimentary field, which is the input field. So again, you see an input open and close tag. The type of uh, uh, field it is is text. It's the most common sort. I think if I omit this, it will actually make it a text field, but I'm including it just, just for the kicks. And the name of this, which, will, will, which it so happens will be the variable for this field, is name. Why, why are you have a closed tag for input? Oh, why don't I have a closed tag for input? You have it. You have one. You have an input. Uh, the input. Oh, uh, you actually can put some stuff in here, you're, you, but you're right. I think it is optional. So why don't we minimize it to make it even simpler? Nice catch. Okay. So um, I'm actually here. I'm going to cheat a little bit and actually instead of writing all this sort of stuff, I'm just going to go to my actual example here. Uh, where am I? Because you guys are getting it here. Um, yeah, HTML force is the end tag is forbidden for uh, input. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and start tag required, end tag forbidden. Okay, I, my expander, I think, just probably tossed it in there, but you're probably right. Um, I'm not right. I'm just regurgitating whatever's in this. No, I'm, I'm, uh, it's, a, it's a matter of uh, some details. Actually, well, I don't want to get sidelined on it. Why don't we just let's concentrate on this particular example because it's, it's less about how to write specifically how you could find that form because you could find that detail. It's more specifically about the usual stopper, which happens to be name and then, oh, excuse me, uh, uh, sending data uh, via uh, a, a form, uh, excuse me, a form. One more time to suggest a different name for that control because when you try to get the name property off the form, it might reflect the form instead of the form's input name name. It's a really bad name for it. For control, for form control. Name is a really bad number. Name equals name. 
that means if you try to get the name property off the form, does it reflect the form's name property or does it reflect the input? Which is the oh, okay, okay. From an example yeah, standpoint, I see yeah, what you're yeah, saying. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Okay, so from what if, if you're trying to get JavaScript, it's been the source of a lot of words. Why? Yeah. Why don't you suggest a name for me? Yeah. Suggest a name for me. First name. Okay. How about that all together? Is that fine? Um, that won't cause any problems with trying to get uh, in the DOM. So if you, if you if you have the reason, the reason for that is that uh, you have a name because the form already has a name property, and then when there's an element. In the form, uh, okay, let's stop. Let's stop confusing everybody. Your 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 point. Is is well made, and we can pick it up after the discussion. I'm going to walk through this particular okay. form test. Okay. All right. Okay. So um, let's. Uh, I'm going to run uh, Ruby my app here. Okay. I'm inside of this. I'm going to. Go back to that form, which is now edited, so that name is equal to first name here. And I'm going to type in some name. What's your name? Jarrett. Like, how's it spelled? G A R R E T T. E T T. Yeah. Like that. Okay. Yes. Then I hit submit. So first name ends up being Jarrett. Okay. Um, can you please go back to the Ruby code because I, I didn't type fast enough to get all that. To the Ruby code. Okay. 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 So, what was what's important about this is you can see in that URL, you you don't see any additional um, parameters, right? There's no name value pairs. There's nothing else actually. But you do see when you're posting that the parameters do get posted, okay? Because it took the value of whatever was in this form that we had, and if we change that to, let's say, Brad, and then submitted it again, it changes it to Brad, right? So again, let's look to see how these two things work together here. This is where it's coming in on. It's coming in on form tests. And you can see this is the actual text that's bringing up here, right? And then you're dumping params inspect. If you look at the form that we we're, we're posting into, whether it's first name or last name, it doesn't matter what it happens to be. change these around a little bit. And you can see that it doesn't matter that I've got anything on the receiving side of this, um, of the form test, that I don't have these variables preset here. They're, they're purely indicated by the, the myform.html at this point. Okay, so if I run this guy again, sorry, I have to restart it in order to be able to, to, to register that. There's a way around that, but I didn't want to confuse things here. Oops, sorry. Then I swoop. Then I hit submit. And now it's constructing. You can see that params actually contains two items. OK. Because th that's fine for simple name value pairs of, of this sort. Let's make it slightly more complicated. Hey, Dennis. Yeah. There's a request for a. Uh, oh. Okay, sorry. Okay. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, if there's uh, if anybody wants me to hold up or slow down a little bit or explain something additionally. Okay, so that's that's the data again. Yeah. 
Uh, Pardon me? Uh, I get one dollars. So all... Yeah, it's also it's all yeah it's all within Git also if you need to get it afterwards. But if you're following along, let's let's just take a minute or two to for those catching up. Go ahead. Yeah, and it shouldn't run the server. Okay. Were you able to get the server running at all, or no. not at all? Uh, no. Do you, do you need to install Sinatra? Yeah, you need to say Jim. Just give that a try. Try typing in Jim install Sinatra in that same directory that you're in. Any other questions from? I've only been able to get the static ones working, and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. So all I can get going is like the Hello World and Boo. I haven't been able to get Blue or yeah. Zoo. I can't even get the, the my form that HTML to come up. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I put it basically everything in the directory like that, and I can't get this one to come up. Put that in the same directory and so no. Okay, so you're. Oh, okay. So what I was doing is actually just uh, letting this. Oops, what uh, you're using, you're in Sublime, right? Yeah. Okay, so I was just going directly to this, mm -hmm. and whoops. Uh, oh, sorry. How do you? How are you right-clicking on this? Uh, I'm gonna have to go ahead and control the right. -click. Oh, you're doing yeah. control right-click. Okay. Yeah. I was doing a direct open in browser okay. in order oh, right to do that, files. and then okay. you could just do directly into that, and then oh, you pass into okay. it, and gotcha, so as, gotcha. long, as long as it's running, it's going into it. Okay. All right. Try that. Okay. Yeah. And also, be sure to put the URL, put the full URL in there, yes. because you, I noticed you just put form test, but you really right. want to put it. HTTP, yeah, that will not work. Use HTTP localhost 4567. Okay. Still need a little bit more time? Um, I, I guess we'll just we'll keep bugging why it's not coming up. I just brought stuff into GitHub, and uh, Sinatra's running. Okay. Um, but it, it's not. It's not. Did you stop Sinatra and then bring it to our stop the app and then do it here? Did you get Did you get any of the examples to work like the get examples? Oh, I see. Okay. Um, maybe. I, I, think, I, I, think, I think we'll figure it out now. Right. Um, we just need to, we, we have the post method on the uh, form test, but not the get method to show the form, to render the form. So I'm here. Oh, oh. Do, do you have, do, do you have the form, do you have my form.html, first of all? Yes. Do you have my app.rb? Okay, and then do you have a method post? This thing right there. Uh, is, it in, is it in your GitHub? Yeah, it is in the yeah, GitHub. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then so, okay, the way that I was doing it, I thought this would be easier because I didn't want to explain views just yet. Just it's just opening it directly in the browser. Yeah. Okay, just open it directly in the browser. It doesn't matter where it is. Sorry, I should have emphasized that a little bit more. Oh. Open it any in any. It doesn't matter where it's running, just as a plain like local web page. And that was sort of a way to demo, to to sort of prove also it doesn't it, this could be coming in from where. Okay, I'm gonna. Uh, okay, the okay, let me let me. Um, Continue on for a little bit in order to because we're uh, uh, um, we'll probably have a little half hour more and then I'll, I'll break up uh, I'll break things up basically and then we can look at any specific issues. So if you could just follow along here and be satisfied with that for now, that'd be great. Okay. Okay. Are you anybody else? Are we more or less okay for now? Okay. Just try to follow along. Actually, if you, yeah, if it's if it's completely breaking down right now, you know, the, I suggest um, try to absorb as much as you can. All of this is on GitHub, okay? I try to do an additional presentation where I'm walking through all of these sort of steps in an online sort of fashion as well, okay? But just try to follow along what's going along conceptually because there's some fairly important stuff to be able to, to sort of get to here, okay? So I've got uh, three more examples with respect to terms, but these, this will completely, to me, these completely start demystifying kind of what's going on with the param with parameters and forms, okay? So here's uh, 
uh, I've got uh, form. Uh, this is uh, another route that I've got set up. Form test two, and I'm going to um, comment this out, and then bring up the form that should go with form test two. And I believe those are all. I, I haven't made any modifications. So I'm just going to run that. And uh, I can say that I'm Spock. I can say that my rank is Commander. And it doesn't matter what it is. OK. And I hit Submit here. And you can see that I'm taking additional variables here, Spock, Commander, Serial. And then uh, I have something, uh, I have a reference to um, The parameter rubbish, but I don't have any variable rubbish that's coming in, and so it doesn't print anything in that in that particular example. Okay, so this next example I think is the subject of the gray distribution. for a number of people, myself included. Okay, let's look at this form for a second. So, you pro even if even if you're having a little difficulty, you probably get the idea that name of how name val value pairs and forms are coming in, right? You 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 type in the name and then you type in like the variable that you're affecting, whether it's name or rank or or serial, uh, and it gives it gives you that name value pair. But something that you see very commonly in uh, particularly in Rails is um, you'll have um, uh, a hash coming in uh, where you'll have um, a single object like song, for example, with different parameters like title, artist, and song style. And the way that it's noted is um, within the form is to put, uh, you're putting in these square brackets around the variables uh, that uh, are associated with the song, with song. Okay, so it gives an interesting result, which is if I type in a song, uh, uh, if I type in a uh, song like Bangarang or uh, Skrillex and Dubstep, right, and hit submit, what I'm getting back is not something that looks like song title Bangarang, song artist Skrillex, song style dubstep, I'm getting back one thing, which is song. And then song contains title, whatever title, whatever is inside of title, in this case Bangarang, artist, style, and so forth. Okay. When I look at uh, that's the full dump from inspect. So if I type in param song, it gives me sorry, getting a little lost here. just this hash. And then if I just want the title, and this is where you'll commonly see this in uh, Rails, is you'll do uh, a variable assignment. You'll get a variable song, grab params song, and then refer to it in this way, song title. Okay, now that's probably confusing. So, questions? Does this go with Active Record? Uh, yes, that will. This is the respect of Active Record. I, in fact, I'm not using Active Record here. Here, I'm using Data Mapper, which is also something that you can use in uh, Rails. Is that the Data Mapper part of Sumatra? No, 
No, it's not necessarily part of this. It is very often used with Sinatra, but um, Data Mapper is just another way that you can get at the database. But it actually, Data Mapper and Active Record have nothing to do with this layer. I'm purely looking at the way the application interacts with the web at this point. Okay. Because it's working. I got it. I don't have any of those things installed, but it's working. It's like yeah, exactly. No, that's kind of the point, actually. No, that's good. You can sort of see the point is, you know, there's this all this sort of stuff basically that has to do with just getting the parameters in and out, and then being able to manipulate the hashes in such a way that you can actually do something with it. Okay, and and uh, to be able to get some complexity then in in what you're writing has to do with your understanding of this. Yes. Can you talk a little bit more about lines of 89 and 92? Um, you were saying in 89, yeah. you're assigning song, uh, as a, you're saying you're assigning it as a or as a Right. Well, that, yeah, okay, so that's the trick is, okay, uh, yeah, uh, I'm glad you're asking this. Okay, so what, uh, 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 when when I look at this form, right, because this is the data that it's coming in from, right? The first thing I'm writing is this variable song is equal to params song. So what would you expect to come in? What would you expect params song to be? Song. Right, exactly. But the thing is that in this, yeah, in the simple example like name or rank or serial, right. it's it's fairly right. easy to see what's going on there, right? right? Name is just it's like a name value pair. Name equals blah, right? Rank equals whatever rank happens to be. But in this example, you're you're not getting back um, you're not getting back uh, one particular thing in song. You're getting a whole bunch of things back in song. Right. Which I understand more in the line 92. Yes. I don't understand it so much in 89. Uh, okay. Well, actually, it go. You know what? Maybe I I wrong place here. If I put it, um, let's see, um, if I took this out. Here. Does this make more sense? Yeah, you're just pulling one thing out. That's right. So now I'm just pulling one thing out of params. And then how would we rest what pull out something besides the title? Then. Or even know what the category is, or would we have to use some sort of query, or what's the easiest way to recognize? Yeah, there's no well, there's there's no there's there, there's no data that's going on at the there's, excuse me there's no um uh there's no database that's going on right now so there's no SQL that's involved at all okay so yeah so exactly there's sort of a, the the list that's coming back has to do with with what exactly what you wrote, what we just wrote that's right whoops uh, I'm going back too far here. Um, it has to do with this, okay? So I, you know, if we wanted to, you know, if we did, uh, since I signed song is equal to params um, song, and you could see I pulled out just the title was that, but let's we know from the form that an art we we're able to get an artist as well, right? So if I want just the artist, what would I write here? Artist. artist, right? But you can see how these two lines are dependent on having this line here. If I remove this line, the whole these two lines would fail, and then the whole thing would fail. Okay, is that clear? So you you need to store them in one in one. Parameter as a list, and then you extract them. Is that what you want to say? Well, 
See, that's what's sort of interesting, actually, is that you could actually do something like this. Here, watch this. Maybe this will make it more clear. I'm going to do just title, but I'm going to use an alternative method in order to pull all of this out. Parents um, song, and then title. Okay. This line will be the same as this line because you can see this is actually this. So I'm just substituting the variable song here for this thing, which looks a little bit messier, right? So very typically, you do something that looks like this, song, and then you get all these params back for one particular object is what it's called. It's not just a variable, it's a collection of things. Okay, so here, let me demonstrate that that, that actually works. I have to stop the app, refire it up. Go back to that form. Let's fill it out again, bang rang. But it doesn't blow up. And you see just title and just title are the same, right? So maybe it's instructive to look at it in this in this sort of way. Params always comes back. There's always some params that comes that, that you can look at whenever you're doing a get or a post. Okay. Can you just say, what is line 2 doing? Yeah, I mean, 92, what's 92? 92. Oh, line 92? Yeah. This one? Yeah. Song, params, title. Okay, so let's look at let's look at it inside of, let's look at what the result is. And you can see how it's constructed, right? So that's a Ruby hash. So in other words, it has to bring up It doesn't, well, it's, let's, let's, what I'm doing is actually making visible what is available as soon as you hit the form, when you hit that form and post it into that, uh, in, into that uh, uh, post method. Okay, so in other words, you're just trying to show something that you wouldn't necessarily write that code in there. You did, that's right. That's correct. Yeah, so this is not necessary code in order to make this whole thing work. If I, I mean... Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like, why would I, why would I want to show this? I, you, you know, this is not the typical way that I would show something, right? But it is showing you underneath what is going on is that you've got this thing, which is called params song, which gives you this hashback. And it's an important thing to note, in Ruby, you're always dealing with hashes. Hashes are sort of like the base unit of thing that you're dealing with within, within Ruby and within Rails. Okay. And so, um, you know, uh, this is a good way to sort of show you what's, what's going on here. But, but, you know, more typically, you would not include something like that, right? You would just omit that. In fact, you wouldn't even need any of this stuff, right? I mean, really, you want to be able to reference it in, in these ways, right? So let's see how, let's look at the clean version of it, since that's, provide, that's creating some confusion here. I'm going back. I'm just going to use that same form information. I'm clicking, and you can sort of see this is kind of more typically how it would appear, right? And so now the code that you see to you know, to get all of that is 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 evident here. Now, what's interesting to me is that you get this really weird construction here, right? Of params with a with this with the square bracket, and then yet another square bracket. That's like two arrays. Or? It's two. Um, it's two hashes. Two hashes. Yeah, one contained inside of the other, and so that's why I think it causes so much confusion because. The way you're able, to, the typical way, it's not even atypical, this is the typical way that you construct a, uh, a form is 
uh, something that results in data that looks like this, where, where the name of any one of the fields, if you've got you know, the object that's coming back, is song with the square bracket. But it's referred to in the, um, within your code uh, as something a little bit more abstract if you were just looking at params. And so that's why people for usually say, okay, well, let's name all the stuff that uh, is going to uh, be in this hash consistently. So it's like song, song, song. That actually is my next example. It's going to do this with like two different hashes, and it will be a little bit more evident. Give it song equals params of that, and then call it in this way. Because if you were to call this all the time, it's looking a little noisy. It makes it look like that original hash. Yeah, yes, yeah. This, this call starts making this look closer to this, right? The one difference is that in, in this form, you don't have the symbol. You need this symbol in, in Ruby, and you need it in Rails. What does this app do? What is what? What does this app actually do? Oh, it's just demonstrating how to get data in and out of the application. Okay. <laughs> These are all demo pieces. You would never, you know, what it, it it's up to you to be able to construct something that that, that makes use of all, all these types of things. But the, the the idea is that I'm trying to get you to an understanding as to how, the kind of weird way that the form works with the way that, that Ruby and Rails, for that matter, and Sinatra, all uh, 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 refer to the data that's being passed back and forth. No, I got it. Yeah, you explained it pretty much. It's a demo. But uh, parameters to the server, post it, and see how to pass the data back and forth. This is all it's going to be on the school site, the Rails school site? Yes. Yeah. There's a uh, Git repo. It's uh, already up there, actually. with that uh, no, and actually it's sort of interesting because I was uh, we'll talk, we can talk about that later okay so the, the, okay so now this is the final form that I want to go through here same sort of deal but now we're at, I'm actually using two objects two hashes one of them is house and you can see that uh, uh, house is referred to by name here, right? And I've got Starship, and Starship also has name in it. But they, they exist in two different variable spaces. They're actually two different objects entirely, okay? And then I've got a final one just to make things interesting called Love Dubstep, okay? So, so let's just... Name is Spock. Excuse me. Start your name is Center. Love step, step. I hit submit, and again, purely for demo purposes, right? To show you what's going on underneath. It's interesting that you know you get a hash back that is house, and then you've got uh, you know house is pointing to name, Lannister, alignment neutral. Then you get another hash, starship, which contains, uh, excuse me, another key starship, which contains the hash, name, enterprise, and captain Spock. And then uh, at the final level, you get uh, uh, loves dubstep Skrillex, okay? So this loves dubstep and Skrillex is, is the more familiar sort of form that we've got, right? Which is just basically purely name and then value, but you, you can see that you can start passing fairly uh, complex uh, objects within forms just by setting up your form in this way. By using a name which contains this 
uh, square bracket notation and then the, uh, the, the attribute that uh, is, is getting passed. Um, the, let's take a look at this for a second more also. So it's interesting to see how this is all being dumped out. So actually, we skipped ahead, I skipped ahead a little bit because um, the, this was the question that was being asked earlier, is um, uh, you know, rather than setting up a variable song and then uh, setting up some params, what I'm doing is I'm just dumping all of the parameters here. For house, I'm just dumping whatever the, the house parameters are here. So you can see the result is house, params house just gives you just that hash. Params starship just gives you that hash. And then if you wanted to extract any single, um, any single uh, uh, um, uh, variable name here, you get a construction that kind of looks like this. Again, with that weird sort of like double um, uh, square bracket notation. This I think is a little bit weird. Um, the, 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 I mean, it is tip it's, it's somewhat typical, but actually more typical Ruby and, and Rails is to start making constructions like this. It's like more often than not, you're seeing things that you're seeing a controller that starts Um, uh, starship equals param starship and house is house. And instead of dumping all of this then, you would do something like just dumping um, uh, so that is that actually so actually if you just dumped out a house at this point or starship and you can see I'm all I'm doing is doing the substitution here spelling today Oops. In this case is Starship Captain. So you can see when I do this sort of substitution, it, it, it cleans it up a bit. Let's run the code again to see that it's still working. I'm just going to use the same variables. And you can see it gives the same result. Okay. Now I don't know. Maybe it's even actually more clear, basically, with with two sets here. That that you know, if I if I'm dealing with two types of concepts here, like two objects, starship and house, and I've got a comp and I'm starting to get a complex form, basically, this is how it start getting represented. Basically, it, it gives you a way to be able to to break out your code in this type of way. And I intentionally gave parameters for name in both of them. Uh, because you can see they're in two different namespaces, basically. So uh, when I dump out house, you know, it's it's the and refer to house dot, dot house name. It's referring only to house name. It's not referring to the starship name. It's not getting confused with any other name. It's just the name that's there. All of these are just determined by what's inside of the form. It is not determined by anything that's in the database. It may later, <laughs> okay. Uh, but what I'm trying to show is that at, at this level, before you've touched the database, there is this interaction that is going on. Okay. Are there any questions? On this part. Yeah. Um, I, I guess before you change the code to be more like form three. Yeah. Um, and you're dumping in prams, are prams, and steps. Yeah. Um, then at some point, I guess it's when you're doing, if you did starship name and then something else name, yeah. I guess you're saying, if 
because you're calling the frames explicitly on each thing within its uh, framework, then it's not going to be confused at what frames you're asking. Right, right. You're not confusing house with um, starship. You're not confusing house name with starship name. Even with the way it was written before. Even with the written, well, uh, yeah, yeah, even with the way it was written before. That's correct. That is correct. So uh, here, to give an example, because I didn't actually write out the rest of, of house name, and I probably should have. I type in house name, right? I mean, I've got two things that are named name that, that have a, a, a reference to name here, right? But, but they're in two different namespaces. And okay. it's referencing the namespaces in green, not, not the uh, yellow form field. Oh. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, okay. But you're getting how these kind of relate to one another, right? Yes? And you're saying it's, it's all, this is all happening with Ruby using forms without Ruby. That's correct. That's correct. You've got it exactly. And that, that this that this is going on in Rails when you're doing this within Rails. And it's because of the routing? And this is exactly what's going on when you're getting to routing. Because when you're looking at... Oh, I'm sorry, Brad, did you? Oh, no, I was just going to mention um, the, the parameters come from... Uh, uh, it, it's okay, I just want yeah, to... Yeah, of course. Where the, um, so you, know, you, you type in a form, right, and you hit go. And you hit submit, and a whole lot of things uh, happen there. You, that you find the service DNS look up, right? One of the things that's happening is your browser is packaging up those things in the form into this little ball of data. And the structure of that data is determined by what data is showing in the form markup, the name and that kind of stuff. And inside of Sinatra, inside of Rails, is some middleware that's grabbing that and turning that into a hash call params and presenting it to you to manipulate. So that's kind of the glue between what that is doing in the HTML form, what you're doing in Ruby programmatically. And so you don't really need to know that, though, just sort of magically happens. If the form says this stuff, it will show up in params like this, and then you can just go to town and, and program away. Question. Yeah. So you're saying that basically you don't have to be a MySQL expert to do that? Not to do this. Not to do this, actually. You could run, I mean, you could grab Sinatra the same way that, I'm, that I've just um, demonstrated to you now and write, start writing programs. Is generating any SQL? It's not generating any SQL. There's no database involved here at all. So if you just had like some fairly simple data manipulation to do, okay. you can. Good job. Very good. <laughs> very good. Yeah. So it's basically just like a Song equals JSON on dot pre underscore generate. And then in a parenthesis, I put params, square bracket colon song, and then dot two s. And it worked. Good job. For, for like, okay. doing it, like one of the other big points of your presentation is that sort of the heart of book can be, or online, I think, to be, be tough. And to go through Sinatra first, like, Spend some, spend a week with Sinatra before going. Yeah, I would, I would, yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, here, let me, I'm, I'm actually going to cut the preso short now. I've got a whole additional section on databases, but I kind of felt like I was not going to be able to get to the databases. We could save that for another time. But th that is the primary takeaway, actually, is that by spending time at this level, it gives you a very good understanding of, or a better understanding of what's going on with uh, uh, several of the layers here, and that since Sinatra is so simple, as you can see, Garrett was able to start manipulating the right way. I mean, you, you, presumably you could have done that in Rails as well, but Rails, when you start, you know, you can sort of see the number of um, files that I'm dealing with with Sinatra, even even the most um, tricked out, you know, final tricked out version is like one, two, three, four, five, six with the database files, you know, and so it's a lot less um, to manage on the brain, basically, over, let's say, uh, rails, basically, if I were to do...
something blue, okay? It's creating all this stuff, which I grant is not necessarily a bad, but there, it can be very confusing to jump back and forth and to uh, say, okay, well, what am I dealing with, you know, uh, at this point? Now, all the stuff that I'm showing you with the routes and so forth where you're getting stuff is contained in this subfolder, you know, something blue, app, excuse me, it's not, in some, it's not even an app, it's in config uh, routes, RB, and it's at the bottom here, okay, and actually there's nothing configured on it right now, basically, so there's so much invisible stuff that's going on before you can start understanding what's going on um, that it starts becoming a stopper for learning Rails. So what I discovered, and it was actually suggested to me a long time back, I ignored the advice and then actually took the advice and then discovered, oh yeah, that was a good idea, is I picked up a copy of Jumpstart Sinatra, which you can do in a weekend. The Jumpstart book series are, are designed to um, do on, within two days in a weekend. And it walks you through all of this stuff, uh, including the databases, including building that? up. Jumpstart Sinatra, you can go to Amazon and then just type in Jumpstart Sinatra. So how far does Sinatra take us? Like, how, how much is it used out there? And how, um, is it just something just as a learning? Or, or? No, I actually, I was going to show a chart. I was going to design a chart, basically, as to kind of where it, kind of, you know, where it goes. But, but you'll find that Sinatra, I mean, Sinatra supports sessions. Sinatra, you, know, you can throw a bootstrap on Sinatra so it'll look nice. It will support active record so it starts looking like Rails, okay? Um, people, uh, and actually it makes a really good backend for Angular <laughs> because you can actually just serve up just pure JSON on, on the thing and, and Rails is too big for that. Um, where it starts being dumb to use Sinatra is when you start getting very complex controllers. And so what I started to say, if you can start using like much more standard RESTful controllers, you're better off just using Rails, okay? But if you've only got like maybe about 20 or so routes, like a handful of routes to handle, you know, where you've got maybe the equivalent of like two or three forms, and, and mind you, this is kind of like, you know, look at any big uh, successful web app like uh, Twitter even. It's like how, how, how many forms are in Twitter? It's like not that many really, right? And how many routes are in there? It's like you could actually kind of almost write like a Twitter inside of a, inside of a framework, a micro framework like Sinatra, okay? So I don't necessarily recommend it as an endpoint. I'd say it, it, it becomes a, hey, if you want to quickly prototype something and you don't want, it doesn't have to uh, be extremely uh, uh, durable because scaling also might be an issue. Um, uh, Sinatra is not a bad solution, actually. Uh, but as it turns out, um, especially if you're using agile and lean practices, a lot of the times all you need to do is knock up a prototype. So I would say Sinatra is extremely good for prototyping. It's pe people are using. If you look at the Sinatra in the wild page, it's like shows you what people are doing. People have written like very small little applications that you can just download and fire up that act as uh, your uh, uh, server admin or do IT and stuff like that, right? It's like they'll that just do like like vast like monitoring systems and this type of thing because they just need fairly limited uh, interaction basically without like a full rail stack. And there's, since it's so small, there's a lot less that can possibly fail. It becomes a little bit easier to troubleshoot. This is not a knock against Rails. I mean, ultimately, I do, I, I do like Rails as, a, uh, as a, a, a framework, you know. But I found from a learning standpoint, um, uh, doing, this, doing uh, uh, routing, because when you start taking all of this stuff and um, um, uh, let's, you know, let's go to a Thing. And you can see this dump of um, roots, right? Well, this looks extremely similar to what we've been building out in Sinatra, but it's kind of buried away under, you know, underneath, inside of, under Rails, because you have to actually go outside of your standard um, editor in order to be able to get the full dump of all the stuff that's being sort of push back and forth. But but all the stuff that you're doing inside of Sinatra where you're doing all that get and post and, and where it's pointing to something, it it corresponds in a way to um, the the uh, the 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 uh, 
the, the, the rake file, exactly, this gives me the roots file, uh, which appears when you do rake roots. And so when you're doing, uh, and you can actually write stuff that looks just like this, basically, or excuse me, that, 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 uh, that uh, uh, um, uh, looks similar to the, uh, um, what you're seeing inside of Sinatra, inside of uh, uh, roots in, in Rails, but, but there's, there are several additional levels, basically, that you have to go through, because what happens is all of these roots map to a controller, and then within the controller, it, it, you know, this is the actual controller name, and then you get this little hash mark, and then you get, you get the actual um, um, uh, function that is named inside of the passwords controller that it's going to. That's what's going on within roots. Okay. But it's very similar to what we were doing in Sinatra, as you can sort of see. So to me, that was sort of like the aha moment. Oh, yeah, of course. What's happening is people are either getting or posting things from the web, right? It goes through this lookup table, the URI pattern. It matches it to the controller action. It runs that code. It fully runs that code. And then the last thing that that controller action code always does is either send you to a view page or uh, uh, it, or uh, will send you to a redirect to some other page. But it will always end up on a page somewhere. But actually, that, that lesson was missed on me. It was for the longest time, it's like, what is actually going on? With the, I know I can see that the roots are happening here, but then there's also uh, the controller and then the action. But it's implied that after you finish whatever the action is inside of your controller, it goes to a corresponding uh, view by default or does whatever the controller tells you to do. Yeah. I'm hearing, like, I just heard from somewhere on the web that Sinatra can scale really well. And people are now saying that Sinatra, you don't even have to do Rails. Not for everything, but that it can get really complex as, as what you're saying. Could you do a Craigslist type app in Sinatra, just out of curiosity? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think you could totally do a Craigslist style app in Sinatra. I mean, oftentimes, scaling and complexity is not a matter of the um, the total f um, the framework, per se. It's a matter of the engineering of all the parts inside of the framework. It's what database you're using. It's optimizing the calls that are made to the database. Um, it's improvements in the core language, like Ruby got much faster over the last couple of versions, that type of thing. So as you're seeing these gradual improvements go on, you, you, you are probably seeing some people that are saying, you know what, I actually prefer doing Sinatra to Rails. But I think it's a careful decision that you have to make, basically, especially when you're building um, you know, uh, uh, you know, for a business or something like that. If you're doing it on your own, I would say, hey, you know, mix it. You know, I, I, I personally don't like to be, I, I'm, I'm a framework agnostic. You know, I have an interest in looking at Sinatra. I have an interest in looking at Rails. I have an interest in looking at um, Express and Node. I've been doing a lot of work with Angular recently. Okay. And so you want to look at all of these, but that's a really good, that's actually a really great point that 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 uh, that you you can absolutely scale these apps. It's not it's uh, it's uh, you know it's not just referred to as a micro framework, but it's not to say that it isn't very robust. It can do a lot of stuff. Thank you. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. appreciate it. So um, yeah. So that so anyway. The, uh, that's about the end of my preso here. Uh, like I said, I had this whole other section, you know, that had to do with databases, but I did have the feeling that I was not going to uh, uh, get to that. So I appreciate you guys coming in uh, in, in 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 today. Thank you. Um, well, I'm gonna go home and like jumpstart Sinatra. But jumpstart, yeah. But again, takeaways uh, uh, in learning Rails, Sinatra is actually, and it can be done very quickly. So let's say it it doesn't end up being a very good learning experience for you. It's, you're only burning two days on it. <laughs> yeah, uh, the Jumpstart Sinatra series is really good. A book that I feel really teaches Rails in the right way, actually, in my opinion, is Beginning Rails Four by A Press, because it actually puts it in the order of of not learning like all of this crazy stuff that we were talking about, but but in the order of um, um, in the
Yeah, beginning rails four by A press. Here, let me. I'll put them up on the screen here, and I'll I'll, I'll mention them. I'll put them in the show notes here. But yeah, beginning. This guy. I mean, it does some several smart things. It, it does. It saves Git for last, and then after the Git chapter, it does tests. So it's like, so you're, it's like you're omitting. Like, oh, thank you very much for attending. Thank you very much. You know what I downloaded that on a free. It's got this free website that you can get free ebooks. Yeah. And I've got that as a free yeah. ebook. Yeah. I didn't pay any money for. Yeah. So you think that's the book you use? Yeah. Be sure to check some money back to these guys because it takes time and money in order to to, to, to yeah, write books. <laughs> but but I don't. You know what I. You know what I. But if there's knowledge to be had, you got to steal it. You know. So if you can get yeah, if you can get if you 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 know. So if you check it out from the library, if you pay for it, or if you get it from a free site, get that knowledge basically. I went through this book. I went through this book, and it, it, to me, it went. Yeah. So how much is real? I mean, I'm sorry, not sure what you okay. use out there. Uh, is it just, just, just for like utilities and tests? Well, why are we I mean, are there companies that are using it? Sure. Here are some examples. They're using what? These, these are all people that are using Sinatra. Where did that list come from? Sinatra in the wild. This is in production. Yeah, these are in production. What, what so comics on your iPhone. So look, here's somebody that's actually doing an iPhone app, right? That's that's back ended with Sinatra, right? Here's um, team management collaboration service. So so is the idea that you use Sinatra until until you're finding things that it can't do, and then maybe you switch to Rails, and it's going to be easy. I, you know what? That's a difficult call. That's a really good question and a good observation. But it, I, I don't think it means, you know. I mean, I, I can imagine some people just use it not for everything. You know, some people have said some Ruby developer, excuse me, have said just so not just my favorite framework. Yeah, I'll, I'll use it for seventy percent of the stuff I need to build. But how does that help you in your career? Yeah, well, that, I think that's what the question is. I think because Rails tends to be the thing that people want in the wild, you know. But it's funny because when you start looking at like some of the recent add-ons to Rails, they start making it look a little bit more Sinatra-like. Like um, there's a head, I forget. Um, uh, there's a headless. Um, um, oh, the Rails API. Rails API actually builds Rails, but without views. At that point, it starts looking very similar to Sinatra without uh, routes, or excuse me, uh, with routes that answer to JSON. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so uh, you know, because, uh, and and its intended usage is for the types of things that I would just typically want to use. That, that I would probably say, well, that looks like a Sinatra app for me. All I'm doing is serving up JSON, yeah. right? And there's not, you know, so. But I mean, from a career standpoint, I mean that, and that's the, the both fortunate and unfortunate thing I think is is. Is Rails the, is by and large the more expected thing to know, so I think yeah. it's it's worth knowing. But there's if you keep going with Sinatra, you start thinking, what can't yeah, this thing do? Yeah. Sounds like you're. This is what will make it easy to switch over at some point. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say it's not well. Like I said, um, I I prefer actually toying around with Rails at this point. I toy around less with Sinatra, but for me. Sinatra was the big jumping off point to say, oh, I now I get a whole bunch of things. Yeah, I, well, actually, I, I, I did Rails, got frustrated with it, then actually started learning just like basic web components. I went to like CSS, jQuery, jQuery brought me to Angular, so I just hung out in Angular for a while. Because you can do a heck of a lot with Angular before you even have to do anything that requires a back end. And I was just using a software as a service back end, which is uh, Firebase. And I still, even for my last project, I was using it. Firebase. Firebase. Firebase is a software as a service, which is a that big. But, but ultimately. So you know, you could just use that. Yeah, yeah. But you run into, it's interesting, you run into limits. And there are certain things like with Rails, um, uh, doing like users and groups or authorization in particular, is, seems, it, the, Rails seems very much prepared to be able to do that, where Sinatra 
may, maybe you can bring in gems, but I'm not sure how they're going to work with it. It's not, you'll probably sort of have to hack some stuff together, you know? Oh, um, oh so if you're going to start using... You're going to start using oh, so like Ruby gem. But you, but you know, this, well, this is something I didn't go into. Uh, Sinatra will fully yeah, accept yeah, uh, uh, Rails gems. Okay. It will accept. You can actually do bundler. You can do all that sort of stuff. So it will actually do that. But what I haven't tested is like the, the specific gem that I'm talking about. So because I'm, I'm believing, oh, yeah, yeah. well, it's pretty robust, but it's not exactly Rails. If I if I'm going to the extent where I'm using a lot of gems, you may as well use Rails. But again, what, what about there's so much. Wow, uh, who's doing XML anymore? <laughs> like RSS yeah, RSS. Yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, I, either would be fine, basically. It's just, yeah. So not, oh yeah. So in fact, I would say Sinatra would be preferable, you know, in order to be able to get, you know, just sort of stuff sort of parsed out of an RSS feed or something like that. But but more commonly, you're doing to and from JSON nowadays, right? So I mean, you, you know. So I'm the. I'm just thinking of an app that I want. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Well, at that point, well, okay. Old app that that's running as a sprint that I would be nice if I added a user interface to that. All that reading for RSS feed. I I will I will take a guess that you could probably find a gem that will do that, and then just see if it runs on Sinatra. Because at that point, you can do because you can yeah. fi- totally do. Um, and you, you know you can Google this. You'll you're, you're smart. You'll figure this out. The, the, but you can you can. You know, you can set up a gen file just like you do in Ruby, and then um, just start putting, including your all of your gems, the same way that you do in within Rails, and then just run Bundler just the same way that you do within Rails, and then it will actually build all that stuff into into Sinatra. So if you want to just keep things simple, you know, uh, not run have all this rake and all this other sort of crap, you know, you could you could just you know try out Sinatra. So I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. He was telling me like months ago. I feel like I should kick myself. He said start with Sinatra and you'll understand it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, this comes up as it comes up as very common advice. It's really interesting. It's just like then, when I was asking Gabe about it, you know, Gabe who you know, uh, he was like, oh yeah, you know, it's like yeah, no one's ever taught the Sinatra thing before. It's like yeah, I mean, he was obviously interested in it, right? He's trying to get, but it was like. That was like the break to me. It was like it's crit- It seemed to me critical. It's like the breaking point between understanding early, you know, novice Rails learning basically, and then getting hey, when I come getting. Here, uh, it's funny. Like it's usually more Ruby than Rails, but occasionally they'll jump into some sort of advanced Rails. Oh, yeah. They're like jumping around. Yeah. Um, you know, into controller and just like yeah. you know, changing roots and everything. And I'm like. Yeah. What's going on what's here? Going on? <laughs> yeah. 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 And it seems like a lot of plumbing, you know, to like sort I, of. I've never found my way here to the intro to Rails class. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, we've been trying. This is like an intro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we've been trying to get at this. I mean, Brad ran a really good course the prior week on just like here's the simple Rails thing, but you know, to, that that but that, uh, this was almost my response to it. Also, it's just like it's still not simple enough. And and judging from some of the reactions, it's still not simple enough. I've got to, or I've got to work on this preso a little bit more to be able to say, look, we've got to break it down in, in a way that is really understandable, you know, to, yeah, to everybody I'm basically. Like, I've got an app where I'm going to compete with the breaks, and now I'm thinking I can do it all in some Yeah, I would give it a shot. I mean, this is the thing: is that I also felt like. I just want to build apps. I don't really care about actually getting, you know, I don't care what framework I do. If I cannot build in this framework and understand it, then it's a non-starter for me. You don't want to get into religious wars. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like, who cares, basically? So eventually, and I figure I'll eventually learn Rails, you know, but is there a better way to do it? And so I kept hearing this. Well, I didn't keep hearing it. I heard it from one guy, basically, who told me early on. And then I, and then on an off chance, I, ju- I jumped on that book. Basically, it only took a weekend to do, and then it's just like, oh, I, not only do I get Sinatra out of it, I, now I finally sort of understand Rails, yeah, well, yeah. right? So, yeah. so, you know, so that then, 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 so then once you start like understanding that stuff, then, well, yeah, then you start learning Angular because Angular, when you start looking at Angular apps, Angular, you know, take a look at freaking, you know, Angular apps. They're, um, um, uh, uh. Uh, 
Okay, so here's the configuration file. What, is, what does that look like? You're right? Right? I mean, everybody has this concept, right? So it's like you really want, want to, you know, and then it breaks down into controllers, just like everything else does, right? Except it's written in JavaScript instead of in Ruby, right? And then you've got services, which is actually your model layer. So it's the same sort of deal, basically, right? So all of these start, you know, the whole world of web applications, to me, it hinges on understanding MVC and routes. And so that's to me, it's best done with Sinatra. So I hope that was at least a little bit, little bit helpful. Yeah, what about Express? <laughs> Known in like what? what I would call faster version. Or what? No, it's it it it, it it helps you with. I actually, it helps you with routing and all this other sort of stuff. It's just the same sort of thing, basically. Right? Pardon me. Is it like a flavor of Node? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is written in Node. So, or excuse me, it's written in JavaScript. Excuse me, it's back in JavaScript, which is Node. That's correct. I did So, what's the difference between Express and regular Node.js? Well, Express contains things like all of those web server calls and all the routing. It's sort of like the middleware, basically, in order to get to the program logic of uh, that you would run within Express. So think of, excuse me, in Node. So think of Node as the um, as the controllers, and Express as the routing and the web, kind of the web layer. So, you know, th because most often what you're doing in the node layer is some data manipulation and then, like, a call to, like, Mongo or some other database or something like that, right? But you need to have something broker the web, right? Just like I'm showing you here. Something brokers that web, basically. It just so happens Sinatra is so thin you could put, put it all on one page. I mean, what I didn't show you guys is just here's the one page, here's the one page app for... Um, or a full MVC, basically, in, uh, let's see, together. Dot, do, 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 do. Okay, so this is the whole thing right here. Okay, so here's the database. So this, this kind of starts looking like uh, uh, Rails migration, right? Um, there's actually something I was going to do offline here, but there's some there's something that you call which is like um, uh, data mapper uh, auto migrate with an exclamation point and that actually creates the database at that point. All of this data is still the same, but I had an example here where um, and we didn't get to this um, where. You start writing more and more complex code here, and then you eventually get to like an ERV file, right? Well, in Sinatra, you can either put that in a separate view directory, like like Rails does, or you can actually put it at the end here and then just indicate it with these two app signs. So the whole model view controller and routes, that's all in this file. I mean, Rails takes how many freaking directories in order to do the same thing? Right? It's kind of crazy, right? So to me, it's like I would rather just build and maintain this, right? I can, you know, and then I got to a level where I was building a few things. It's like, okay, now I'm ready for Rails space. I can see why my controller code is getting a little bit more complex. I'm compacting one call within another. There's a bunch of functions that I'm calling and so forth. Okay. Time. Yeah, it's getting too big for you. Too big for one file. It's like I can start breaking this out into multiple files, but it's like at that point, so I might as well go to Rails. So, so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly that was one of the examples. Also, so you could see views actually funky ERB, and then you could just put everything inside there. That that's ex that's exactly matching where the ra the views uh, within Rails. Where it starts falling apart is when you do controllers. Then you have to do. There is some interesting discussion that's going on. It's like, how do I get controllers out in, into external files on Sinatra? And it's just like, well, you can, but it's really not built for that. So here's the tricky way in order to do that. In terms of like, I know in real you have what's great or whatever it is that you're using. Right, 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 right. Well, you tend not to do so much of that stuff. You just you don't do. I mean, you do. You use rate for. Data migrations, okay. You don't. You you can do your own data migrations inside of Sinatra or within uh, within IRB, 
Okay. Um, for um, running tests, okay, tests actually. Um, you know what? I've really not. T I you know I have to an answer and answer honestly. I've not really TDD them in Sinatra. I've not really built anything that's that is problem. big enough to have to TDD the thing. Yeah, that's, that if I if I were to get something out that needs to be in the wild, yes, I would want. To, I'd have to figure out where to TDD. Yeah. So you yeah. Like yeah. So, you know, all these years ago, my friends with Bob started doing like C plus plus and came up their kind of C. Yeah. Like I was still just scripting and doing Linux admin, and now I'm like I'm using Rails. I mean, I mean, I'm using Ruby all the time. Yeah. I'm using yeah. Python all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all, this all, stuff, stuff. all this object oriented programming that I was kind of like, that's really difficult. I don't know. Now I'm like just doing it. So I'll, now I'm like, well, I might as well just learn. Yeah, yeah, why not? You know. So you, you're doing like Ruby inside of your admin work? Um, Chef Flash. It's just like Puppet. Yeah. 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 And that's like an admin tool. It's configuration management. But it's yeah, on steroids. Yeah, like, yeah. In the old days, you just do like Puppet. And you would have like Absolutely. some scripting language like Ruby or Python or something that would build files and then you would use Puppet to push them out. But Ruby does everything. It's just all. So you don't even need that. You just learn to write a blog icon. Yeah, I mean, excuse me, Chef. Sorry. Chef does everything. It's, it's sort of like a framework for a configuration management. But um, you can program and stuff like that. All the things are all things. And that's an admin tool, Chef. Yeah. I've heard of it. I've heard of Puppet too. So Chef is Puppet. So Chef, yeah, I mean, Chef is going to be powerful because it has commands um, that um, help you to build stuff on Amazon that have the roots right now. There's a command in the Chef called Knight. And with Knight, you can pass like JSON um, parameters to just build out. You know, specific types of servers. Yeah. Like, you know, parameters from JSON explain like the, like the, uh, the RAID system or the disk. Uh, so this yeah, is cool. and that's all the Ruby. You just might as well go ahead and make Ruby pretty obvious. Well, now I'm like, I'm really like, you know, the object variance.